Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going to answer question number five from the um, June 2019 GCE um, Edexcel UK paper for 9M8. A0 paper 1, True Mathematics P1. This is also a question that I've used in my endotopic worksheet for my Pure Mathematics P1 Cambridge um, endotopic worksheet about functions and transformations of functions. So this question here is question 10 from that worksheet and one of the students has asked me to answer the question, especially the last part, but I'll just go through the whole thing just to make it, you know, complete. So it says f of x equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 9, where x is an element of the real numbers. Write f of x in the form a, a times ax plus b squared plus c, where a, b, and c are integers to be found. So in this case here, we have to take f of x, and we have to complete the square, basically. That's what they want us to do. So when we complete the square... One second. I started doing it. Let me just write it down first. 2x squared plus 4x plus 9. So when we complete the square, we want this here to be um, a 1. Okay, as I see, as we see in the form they want us, there must be a 1 there. So what I must do is make sure that there's a 1 here. In that case, as we have an expression, we can't really divide the whole equation by anything. What I'll do is I'll take out 2 as a um, number that will cause this to become a 1 when I take it out. So this will be 2 times x squared should be 2x squared. But as I've taken it out of there, I must also take it out of this term. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this term and divide it by 2, so I'll write plus 2x. And then, if you want to take it out of the last term as well, and continue, you can do. I like to stop here, and then put plus 9. Because I, I like to concentrate on these two terms. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether this number here is divisible by 2 or not. Whatever number is over here, you divide it by 2 and write that down. So, for example, that was a 3 there. I'd put x squared plus 3 over 2x, and then I would continue. Now, what we need to do next is we need, now we can complete the square. This is now in a form which we can complete the square because there's a perfect square 1 here. That's the coefficient of the x, x squared term. So, to complete the square, we write, so I'm going to leave this as it is. Leave the plus 9 as it is. Just keep those out of our sight, basically. And I'm just going to complete the square for what's inside here. So I'm going to have a bracket, which is squared. I'll have x, and I'll have plus a half of this coefficient. So half of 2 is 1. Then I always take away the square of this number. So take away 1 squared, which is 1 again. And then I can expand the bracket here. So I have 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 2 and plus 7. So 2 times this and 2 times a minus 1 plus 9, sorry. Jumping ahead of myself there. Plus 9. And the final step is to write f of x equals 2 times x plus 1 squared plus 7. So there we have completed the square and we've written it in the form that they want us to write in. So there's the answer to part A. Now part B, it says sketch the curve with the equation y equals f of x showing any points of intersection with the coordinate axes and the coordinates of any turning points. So we have got it in both forms. Those, those both forms will help us. Now, to sketch, first of all, we, we recognize we have a quadratic. So we have a quadratic which has either a shape which is a smiley kind of face, opens upwards, has a minimum or a maximum, opens that way. Uh, where in this case, because the coefficient of x squared is positive, we know that it's going to be this type of shape here. All right, so it's not going to be that. So what I'm going to do first before doing anything else is I'm actually going to just make it a quadratic shape here in the middle of this thing without even any axes there. So I'm just going to draw a quadratic. Okay, as best as I can without any pressure on me to make it any particular. There's a bit going out on this side. I'm going to try and do it a bit neater than that. So, one second. Okay, so that's a quadratic shape, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. But you can't have stuff like going like this or going like this, all right? It should, be, it should be too pointy, okay? So you should try to do it so that you get the marks. Now, so there's a quadratic shape that we've drawn. Now, we've got to work out um, where it crosses the axes and all that kind of stuff. So now, let's first of all find out where it crosses the y-axis. It crosses the y-axis when x equals 0. So if we use this form here, when x is 0, y is equal to 9, so that's the point zero nine. 
Okay, now where does it cross the x-axis? Well, I can see from the equation, it won't cross the x-axis. If you look in this form here, this, if you, if you look at this completely square form, this thing is never going to be negative, all right? Because the vertex is negative 1, 7. That's the lowest you can go. And, you know, this is always going to be something which is, you know, positive. It's never going to be re reaching 0. So the x-axis when y equals 0, if we try to solve it, let's put it, keep it in this form. If we try to solve where this equals 0, we'll see what happens. You'll end up with x plus 1 squared equals minus 7 over 2. And there'll be no solution because something square can't can never be negative. So that means it doesn't cross the x-axis. So there's no x-intercept. So it turns before it reaches the x-axis. So the x-axis is going to be somewhere below it. X-axis is going to be somewhere below it. Okay, that's the x-axis. Now we know that the vertex is found by taking the number inside the bracket for the x value that makes the bracket zero, which is negative one. And whatever's left behind outside is a 7. That's the y value of the vertex. So the vertex is negative 1, 7. Okay, so that means this is where x is negative 1 and where y is 7. So the y-axis, I'm going to draw it over here somewhere. Okay, that's going to be the y-axis. That's the origin. That's 7. And that's 9. Okay, so the vertex is negative 1, 7. The y-intercept is 9, and it doesn't have an x-intercept. So we've shown those points. This is, this is the point 0, 9. So that's the, the sketch of the graph. Now, some people might ask, why is this the minimum point? Algebraically, we can see that this will be like 7 plus 2 times x plus 1 squared. So you're always going to be adding something to 7, 7 plus something. And what you add to 7 will never be negative, because this bracket here is squared. So anything goes in here, even if it's a very negative x value, it's going to be squared and you're always adding something to 7. 7 plus 2 times that number, all right? And then whatever number is going to be squared, so it's always going to be positive that you add to 7. So you can never ever go below 7, okay? You're always adding something to 7. Now the lowest you can go is when this bracket is 0, when this whole bracket is 0. When this bracket becomes 0, you have 7 plus 0, which is the lowest you can ever reach. Now what makes this bracket 0? When you put x equals negative 1. Negative 1 in here makes this bracket 0. You have 2 times 0 is 0, so you have 7 plus nothing. So that's why that's the lowest value of y. If they talked about the range of this function, so you can see the range of this function is y is greater than or equal to 7, which will come in later handy for us in the last part of the question. Then for part c, it says, describe fully the transformation that maps the curve with the equation y equals f of x onto the curve with y equals g of x where g of x equals 2 times x minus 2 squared plus 4x minus 3, where x is an element of the real numbers. So what I'm going to do is um, we want to see what takes us from f of x, from f of x, and it maps to g of x. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to express g of x in a more friendly way to be able to, for example, see what its, what its vertex is. Okay, there might be something else I could do as well. If I go from there to, but I'll, I'll do it this way so that we can be a bit uh, clearer about this. So let's let's just write, rewrite g of x by completing the square for g of x. It looks like it's completed the square, but not properly because you've got this x term here. So I'm going to first expand this. It gives us 2x, oops, 2x squared, 2 times x squared minus 4x plus 4. Then you're going to have plus 4x minus 3. That's going to be 2x squared minus 8x plus 8 plus 4x minus 3, that gives us um, minus 8x, 8x squared, sorry, 2x squared minus 8x plus 8 plus 4x minus 3, so you have 2x squared um, minus 4x and plus 5, that's g of x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square for g of x, so it's written in the same form like that. This, again, I have to take 2 out. I've got x squared minus 2, um, minus 2x, close the bracket, and plus 5. Now I'm going to complete the square. 2 times, that'll be x minus 1 squared minus 1, and i got plus 5 on the outside, which gives me 2 times x minus 1 squared minus 2 plus 5. So 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 3. Okay, so now that's what g of x is. So we have f of x, 
is equal to 2 times x plus 1 squared plus 7. Okay, and g of x is 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 3. So let's compare the vertex of this and this, the vertex of f of x and the vertex of g of x. As we said, this is negative 1 and 7, and this is 1 and 3. So if we ask ourselves, how do we get from, from this to this? All right, so from minus 1 to 1, I have to add 2. So you can say that this is like a translation. Translation. Now, from minus 1 to 1 is like horizontal. So from minus 1 to 1, you've got to add 2. And then from 7 to 3, you've got to take away 4. So if you compare the, um, you know, the, what's the word, the coordinates of f of x and g of x, compare the vertex on each of them, you will see exactly what's happened. The minus 1 became 1, you added 2 to it, um, and the, g of, the, the, the y, y coordinate, you took away 4 from it, so it's negative 4. So it just says, describe the transformation fully, that maps this curve, okay, so that's the, trans, that's the, that's the transformation. A translation of vector 2, negative 4. That's what they're looking for here, and there's the answer. Okay, so there's, there's the answer to that. And we have now completed this question. That means, actually, we could have said that uh, g of x is like f, you could say, x minus 2 and minus 4. You could have said that that's, that's what it was. That, that, that would have been the transformation that took us there. So let's see if that actually works. That will give you two times, if you do x plus, that will be x minus 2 plus 1, which is x minus, that will be minus 1, squared, and then 7 minus 4, which gives you 3. Okay, it gives you exactly that. So this, this was the transformation, okay, that was actually caused. We could have got that in the beginning, but it'd be, it's a bit difficult to see directly. So it's easy to complete the square first and then continue. Okay, so there's the answer to C part 1. And now for C part 2, it says, um, find the range of the function h of x, which is 21 over 2x squared plus 4x plus 9, which is exactly what f of x is. So h of x is equal to 21 over f of x. So the range of the function. So let's see the range of f of x. We know that f of x, it can be uh, greater than or equal to 7. That's its range. Okay, so it can go from 7, including 7, all the way to positive infinity. Okay, so let's see when f of x equals 7. When f of x equals 7, therefore h of x is equal to 21 over 7, which is 3. Okay, and when f of x is getting really big, approaching infinity, so therefore h of x is going to be 21 over something which is approaching infinity. Okay, which approaches, if you've got something that's divided by a really huge number, it's going to approach zero. Okay, 21 divided by a really, really big number is going to approach zero. Okay, as, you know, as like for example, 21 divided by, 1 is 21, divided by 2 is, you know, 10.5, divided by... Uh, 3 is 7 divided by 21 is 1 divided by 42 is a half the bigger the number is in the denominator the smaller and smaller the value of the whole fraction becomes okay so if you divide 21 by a really huge number approaching infinity then its value will approach zero okay so we can say that the range of the function h of x it varies between greater than zero and less than or equal to we can say three okay because the biggest that f of x can be, the smallest that f of x can ever be is 3. All right, it can't get smaller than that. So it's going to be a really big number coming down until it reaches 3. All right, so, um, sorry, I mean, this, the value of this is going to be a really big number. Okay, and it's going to get low and low until it reaches 7, and then it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger again. So 21 will be a really small number. And it's going to approach um, the, the value of, of, of 3, okay, as this becomes 7. And when it reaches 7, then after that, it's going to start, you know, the value of, of, of h of x is start going, to, it's start going to get less and less until it goes towards um, 0. It can't go, um, and you, it can't even reach 0, okay? And it can't be negative, because this is always something that is 
positive. So there we, therefore, that's how we can understand how to find the range of this function. To actually draw this function is very difficult, right? It's not, not easy to draw a function like this, um, especially if you're in an exam. So you have to think sometimes in this way. It's a bit of a, you know, uh, you know bit, it's a bit, a bit more thinking involved in such questions, but it's something you have to uh, get used to, right? So you have to try and, you know, think about what the values could be and just you know um imagine so the knowing the range of the quadratic function will help you here that it's between seven and seven and infinity so you think about what happens between those values for the function 21 over that okay so i hope that was clear um other questions from this particular paper for those of you who are taking the uk exam will be found in the playlist over here other questions from the topic of functions from this particular um you know GCE A, A level kind of topics can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from this end of topic worksheet that this particular question I took from um, from the um, functions and transformations worksheet can be found in the playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.